All right, joining me once again here on The Matthew Filipovich Show is my good friend, David Dayan. David is an independent journalist whose work you can find at davedayan.com. You can also follow him on Twitter at ddayan. David, thank you so much for being on the show again. Well, always a pleasure to be on that. Thanks. All right, so David, you recently wrote for The New Republic about Antonin Scalia and the constitutional crisis, and you actually have an interesting idea on how to actually solve this whole, will they confirm, him, confirm a replacement? Will they not confirm a replacement? What's your idea of actually how to change this kind of screwed up system? Yeah, I, I, I wanted to bring in this idea that I hadn't really seen, that one of the reasons why it's so easy for Republicans to say, well, we'll wait until the next president and we'll wait a year to keep the Supreme Court vacant, is that we've been going through a presidential campaign for close to two years, it'll be by the end of it. Uh, and and this, this idea of a permanent campaign just sort of turns the entire last year of a presidency into a lame duck session such that uh, a presidential term these days is now three years instead of four, effectively. Uh, this is the, the Scalia appointment is not really the only way in which the Republican Congress has kind of written the president out of the government. He sent a budget uh, last week, and for the first time in the history of the modern budgeting process, no hearings were held on it. Um, the McConnell, uh, the majority leader of the Senate, Mitch McConnell, has said that he doesn't want to take any votes on divisive issues for the entire year. Uh, you, you basically shut down the government. And I, it's easier to do that because we've been sitting here watching this spectacle uh, for the last six to nine months. And it can feel like the, the presidential election is right around the corner. But obviously, it's, it's not until November. And uh, I think uh, we are, uh, the other thing I brought up is that we're a unique kind of outlier in this among developed nations. Most countries have very short election cycles. Um, that's true in, in parliamentary countries because you have to sort of dissolve the government before you can hold another election. Uh, by law, the longest Canadian election is 11 weeks. By law in France, it's something like four to six weeks. In Japan, it's 12 days. Wow. That yeah. sounds amazing. And <laughs> even, yes, and even in uh, presidential countries, in countries that elect a president in that system, uh, you look at a country like Mexico, which recently changed its law to reduce the election season to 90 days. And no uh, advertisements can be shown. Uh, you know, these are in other countries, you know, there are frequently are equal time laws where uh, broadcasts on television are given to both all, all particular parties. Uh, and, and, and that reduces the, uh, the need for election spending. Um, this was an idea that, you know, 30 years ago, uh, Barry Goldwater, who's, who's as rock-ribbed a conservative as you can get, in his last term as a senator, proposed that there be no presidential election fundraising or spending until June of the election year. So that's a whole different world, and we just don't think about the fact that because we've turned the presidential campaign into a TV show that lasts two years every four years, that we've, we've robbed the ability to govern for long stretches of time. So you're, you're running for president, but when you get there, you can't govern. Yeah, what's really interesting is it actually, you actually write about how I mean, it's, up, it, it's gotten kind of consistently worse because when Clinton ran and even when McCain ran, like they yeah. didn't announce for Iowa until like a few months before Iowa. So this is actually, I mean, it's obviously gotten bigger, but it's actually gotten much bigger, much, much faster, right? Yes, it's grown and grown. You're absolutely right. Uh, Clinton in 92 didn't uh, actually announce for president until October of 91. Uh, McCain in 2000 didn't uh, uh, didn't actually uh, announce until late September of 99. I think the 2008 election uh, turned this into a situation that was a money-making opportunity for cable news and the news divisions of the major networks because they had this very dramatic, historic 
election between, you know, this primary between uh, Obama and Clinton. And they, they keep trying to recapture this magic. And maybe they did this year, thanks to Donald Trump. Uh, and the ratings uh, are playing a role in elongating this election cycle. And uh, at least in this year, Republicans are taking advantage of that to sort of nullify the presidency, nullify the government for, for an entire year out of a four-year term. That's 25% of the term that they're running for.